Mm. What's up, Soul Squad? Happy Saturday. Hey, CT family. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey, Karen Woods. What's up, boo? It's been a minute. Hey, Miss Hurst. Happy Saturday. Yes. Y'all just laying down with for y'all come in. I ain't doing nothing special. Wait for y'all to come in. Oh, excuse me. I know, right? <laughs> I'm fine, sleeper saw just a little bit tired. This little bit tired. You know, I had an episode last night. What's the episode? Child, and they just you why did they just got finished that carrot cake last night? Tia came finally got her three pieces. Yes, low life, I'm tired. Honey. I ain't go to bed till 8 o'clock this morning. I ain't go to bed till 8 o'clock this morning. So I am still sleeping. I ain't go to bed till 8 o'clock this morning. And that's because I got to break this habit of TV watching. Ma'am, yesterday, last night, it wasn't I couldn't go to sleep. I, so I had, you know, well, before we can get started, guys, that's what we do. Before we get in conversation, we know what we got to do. we like to thank God for waking us up to spend another day with our family and friends. That long clock day not wake you up. He did. Can I get it? Amen. 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 <sighs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I don't want to make nobody see. Y'all know. Y'all say, um, when y'all, you make up. That's because I downloaded. This new streaming app called MGM Plus. Because we did movie night on um, Discord and we played the beekeeper. And by the way, Bill, if you're in the house, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That daggone um, Jason Satham. Yeah, he will always be one of my favorite action pack heroes, man. Action pack thrill seeker type. Actor, he when he do an action pack picture, he be getting done. I want to see Baby Brain deal. It looked crazy. That lady looked crazy. She looked like she was obsessed with the man. The man like she was. Obsessed. I saw the previews of it two days ago. I said I was gonna watch it. So after we looked at the beekeeper, cause before the beekeeper, yeah, it was good. Before the beekeeper came on. When I got downloaded, they have a special on Amazon, through Amazon Prime. You know, you could get all these different other. Uh, um, not these. I don't. I don't think so, Michelle. Um, you could get all these different. Oh, excuse me. You get all these different apps through Amazon. One of them's called MGM Plus, and I saw they had the Beekeeper, and I saw they have. Um, the Bob Marley movie, too, and I'm showing that on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm showing the Bob Marley picture on Discord, too. Um, excuse me. So, um, before I got on there with you guys, I was looking through everything. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Taylor. I was looking through everything, and I saw this movie, or I thought it was a movie, then it was end up being a TV show. Hey, Greta. Um... Now, as far as I know, I only, I only saw the one. Um, they were so good. I need to make a part two. Because they need to make a part two. Hey, Amy. Yes. Um, they need to make a part two. Um, I was searching the MGM site, and I ran across this series. Oh, okay, no lie. No lie, could you put the Discord in there? Amy, I'm so glad you're here. I'm no lie, I'm gonna see if she can put the Discord link in here. Cause Amy was the person last night I was trying to find a Discord link for, but I couldn't find it. So I had told her, um, come make sure she be on, on the couch. So that I probably try to get someone to put the Discord link. So um no, for some reason I cannot get the Discord link. 
I cannot find it. I'm not alone. It's a lot like Ty said. He can't find it. It's like the link only pop up for certain people or something because I couldn't find that link at all. Um, so on MGM, Brute, um, 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 strolling to MGM, there go, Amy. Grab with little low life name at. You, you right above, uh, behind low life, Amy. Gra grab that link and you be able to um, join in on Discord. Thank you, little life, as usual. You and Susan QB, y'all be life-saving me with that link, man. Um, y'all, I'm all over the place because, girl, I'm sleepy, y'all. Um, previous to us looking at, looking at that, I was scrolling through MGM, and I like everything King Arthur's, the Vikings, and Merlin. I like that time period. And um, I found this thing called the White King. Why the heck did I turn that on? I found a show called the White King. Granted, it was already 12.30, 1 o'clock when we got out of Discord. Talked on there for a few seconds. I said, I said, oh yeah, I said I was gonna check out this white king. I was like, oh, I could do an episode before I go to sleep. Don't start episode shows late at night. I have no willpower when it comes to it. Y'all, I look all the way up to episode nine. And I finally fell asleep. It was on episode nine. And I woke up. It was episode 10 was playing. So I had to stop it. I said, no, I was looking at episode nine. So now I know I got to start at episode nine. But at each, each episode is 55 minutes long. Hey, each episode is 55 minutes long. So I looked for episode one and two. I fell asleep on episode nine. When I tell you, yes, I do love a good binge, and I be setting myself up for failure the next day, knowing I gotta do stuff. Tell it, but when I tell you, if you if you got MGM Plus, yes, it gets you all the time. And I love Merlin and King Arthur, Lady Guinevere, and the Vikings, and and talking about a, the um. Um, I love all that, you know, because I'm a big fan of the show, the Vikings that they took off the air. I love Ultra, The Last Kingdom, I, Alfred. I look at all those type of shows, like the new one that's on Netflix now. I look at, I look at, I love all those barbarian type of um, shows. They just be getting me. And when I tell you the White King about King Arthur... It's so good. And there are so many different variations of King Arthur's story and Lady Guinevere and all that. And so I was just like, and by you knowing all the variations. Oh, you found that game that tell was telling you about. Um, and, and by there's been so many different variations. The whole time I was watching this, this thing. And when he finally met Lady Guinevere, and he supposed to be marrying somebody else. And he and Lady Guinevere was a handmaid, uh, was the princess's um handmaid. Hey Mo Thomas, I um he ended up marrying Lady Guinevere. I said, I can't see anybody want to look at this. I ain't gonna say the whole thing. But I will, you know, I'll be talking to my TV. So stuff good, I be screaming and talking to my TV. Cause I was screaming last night. My when my son's like, what you what you screaming for? I said, Oh, I said, I'm, I'm talking to the TV, leave me alone. And it's like three o'clock in the morning. I said, I'm talking to the TV, leave me alone. We had some late hours last night in the house. And um, I said, you just, I said, you put your kingdom at risk. You broke a young lady's heart. You betrayed a treaty that you set up. All for this woman you saw one time. And what she was beautiful, okay? But if you know the story of King Arthur and Lady Guinevere, I said, you did all this. I'm sacrificing risk all this for, for a bitch that's going to cheat on you with Lancelot. <laughs> I said, I don't know how they're going to do it in this story. But Lady Guinevere was not true to King Arthur. 
If you look at any other stories, I said you I said you put your treaty at risk. You broke the treaty. You broke a young girl's heart who you supposed to marry because of the treaty, because of the um because of the um the people that's trying to come over and get you guys. I say and at the end of the day, she escaped. That's what I saw on the TV. <laughs> I said, they keep true to the... It, uh, there's no Lancelot on here yet, but I'm on I'm on season one, episode eight, and it's two seasons up here. I said, if she keep true to the story, y'all met just like that, fell in love in one day. You 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 sacrificed your whole kingdom for this for this handmaiden to start a war within your within your uh, people. Boy, I said for a bitch, they ain't gonna do nothing but cheat on you. And the soon last thought come in the picture. What did Queen of Air did? Queen of Air cheated on King Arthur with his with his right hand man with his first knight, Lancelot. I said, so you did all this stuff for the name of love at Bama, you don't even know. Soon whenever Lancelot appear on the show, come about the show, wherever he come in the show. Queen Guinevere is going to cheat on you with them. She ain't no good. Man, but I, I, you know, I, that's how I be doing. I be talking to the TV. I, I love a good show that I can like. I be so into it and I be talking about it and I be talking to the show like if they could hear me and, and, and saying, I was like, I was like, oh, and I was in here to know it's to be, I ain't gonna lie, eating some carrot cake at three o'clock in the morning. I was eating a piece of carrot cake in my bed. I said, ooh, Arthur, I said, you're a dumb in mouth. I said, she gonna leave you for last a lot and you ain't even met him yet. <laughs> Yeah, the Bridgerton. No, it's coming this month. It's coming May. It's coming April or May. I forgot. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming May or the end of April. Yeah. They they ain't had to do that. They split that up in two parts. Already been for almost three years since the last Bridgerton. You don't know. If you let people wait for something too long, they may lose this interest. But it depends on how big a fan you are. When it come on, the rate is going to skyrocket. Hey, J. Poo, the rate is, the rate is going to skyrocket because of the anticipation that people was waiting on. They're going to run to the show. So it's, it's going to be a bust or a miss. But with Bridgerton, I think it's going to be a bust because it's... it's it, I've been, I've been the, I've been craving my Bridgerton uh, fix for since season two. I've been craving my Bridgerton fix since season two. Um, Child, Pete Valley is on standstill too. That's another thing they can't get together. Uh, Uncle Clifford got another contract, another show, or something coming out, or something else, y'all. Child, please. And I remember, I was so. Against P Valley, I was so against P Valley. I didn't look at P Valley when everybody else looked at it. When P Valley first came on that first season, when everybody was looking at it, everybody and their mom was talking about it. I tried to look at it twice, and each time, for some reason, each time I kept turning it on, it was always at um. And that's why I know uh, that that's my show too, Tasha. That's why I know no matter how long they make us wait, them ratings gonna bust through the roof with, with, with Bridgerton. Um, and just like with P Valley, when LP Valley come back, cause it's it's like a good show stuck in your head. When P Valley first came on the first season, I didn't see P Valley until season two. See, my cousin was in the midst of like episode four. Or something in season two. She said, you watch me? I said, I don't want to see that stuff. She said, you got to watch. I said, I don't want to see a whole bunch of um, people. I said the B word because you know how I think. Uh, I said the B word. I'm um, shaking their butts and half naked all over the stage. I said, what do I want to look at something like that for? She said, no, Tony. She said, it's more. She said, yeah, the strip club is how they make their money. And it's about the strip club. She said, but it's, it's so much more than that. She said, you got to watch it. And she said, season two just started, and I'm on episode four. I said, oh, my goodness. And so that night, after I got off the phone with her, for some reason, I couldn't find nothing to watch on television. And I always find something to watch on television, okay? I said, let me turn this P-Valley on and see what she's talking about. I ain't go to bed till that afternoon. I think it had, what, seven or eight episodes or ten episodes? 
And you know, I always start stuff late. That's, hey, Taylor Ease, that's my thing. I always start watching, binge watching late. So I think it was already about like two o'clock in the morning when I started it. And honey, I finished that whole thing. And all reason I said the afternoon because I said the whole <laughs> first season and it was so good and I wasn't tired. I ran it all the way up and to where my cousin was at. And when I finally called her later on that evening, I said, girl, I said, that show was so good. She said, what show? I said, P. Uh, she said, you watched it. I said, oh my God, I love Uncle Clifton. I love this person. I love that person. I was like, oh, she Batman. I was just giving it so much praise then. P. Valley had me hooked. Ends up season two, and I'm still waiting on season three like everybody else. It, 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 took, it, took, it took my cousin to keep telling me to watch it, watch it, watch it. And I gave in to the watch. And it took my night over into the mid-afternoon next day. Hey, Aries. So, y'all, what's new in the neighborhood? What's poppin', Pickle? I don't know. What's poppin', Pickle? I don't know, y'all. What's going on? What's new? How y'all feeling? How was your Friday? I spent my Friday night with most of y'all. You know, um, oh, yes, so like good cold water, honey. Can't live life without it. I know I can't. I go to bed with two bottles of water, and they be frozen. So when I'm doing the middle of the night, oh, my goodness, they be so good. Um, for real, for real, my cousin supposed to come over here, put on everything I love, and this is not to be mean. And I knew this. I set myself up for failure. I knew what I'm supposed to do. But it's not for me. I'm praying on everything I love. This show. <laughs> do that sound bad? And it's all because of my personal gain. Because when this live over with, after I make Jackson his sausages and eggs, because he said, Mom, you made me some sausage. If I make Jackson a sausage and egg sandwich, you know what I want to do? I want to lay down and I want to go sleep. I don't want to fry no chicken. I don't want to make no potato salad. I don't even want no company. That is so mean and bad. I might. I, what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to call her because I know that's my boo. I haven't seen her since June of last year. You know, I, my uncle, her father's not doing well in the hospital, and she's coming a long way past Owens, Maryland, almost an hour and some change away. And she didn't come yesterday, but she was here Wednesday and Thursday, and I loved our time, and I was ready. I was psyched because Tim was even talking about, oh, yes, yeah, I'm like, what time been coming this morning because I got here. I said, I don't know. She haven't called me yet. And Tim said, well, I'm going to come over too. Um and I said, oh, God. So, so, but if my cousin don't come, T ain't going to come because T'ain't coming because she ain't seen my cousin since June last year either. But she talked to her the two times that she was on my house to face FaceTime. And I said, yeah, I'm going to make some potato salad and fry some chicken. And we're going to drink all my drink we got in there. She's going to bring some ice. <laughs> you know, happy. Yes, energy will come telling. You know how it would be when you try to go out with friends and they beg you to go out, but you really don't go out. And then you be getting dressed and all of a sudden that, that friend will call you and be like, girl, are you mad? Um, I'm not going to be make it tonight. Um, can we be scheduled? Are you, you okay? You mad? You be like, sure, I understand. You hide that phone up and you do a dance. Yay, because I ain't want to go out anyway. Throw your clothes off, grab your popcorn, take your mug control, hop back in the bed, and you win, you win, you wanted to be from the first place. You were sacrificing your time and your effort to go hang out with your people. But then for real, for real, you ain't really want to hang out. So when you got that cancellation call, you acted sad on the phone, but in real life, you was like, whoo. Let me. <laughs> that's that's how I'm feeling. I'm not gonna call and cancel, but if she don't call me, I ain't call her. <laughs> I'm telling you on some real stuff.
Oh, that water's so good. Excuse me. I'm going to cook my baby sausage and eggs. He said, because I supposed to make him sausage and egg yesterday. I ain't making sausage and egg. But I'm going to cook this my baby, um, his sausage and eggs and, and call it and call it. I'm going to call it. But, you know, like I say, I would never deny my cousin. If she called me and say I'm on my way, I'll just go throw some water in my face and um, get myself together. But if she don't call me, I'm not looking for you. This one of these days that I'm not looking for you. I'm not calling. I'm not saying, where you at, boo? Where you at? I thought you was coming. Oh, you won't get that from me today. Not in a long shot, okay? <laughs> So that's how my day. That's how that's how my day going, y'all. That's just, that's just, I'm just being so open and honest. That's just how I'm truly feeling right now today. But I blame myself because I knew my plans, and I let a, I let a TV show um take me down. I let a TV show take me down. But I'm telling you, you got MGM Plus. The White King is good. It's so good. It got me. And I like I said, I love finding new television shows. I love it. I love it. I love it. So who else got something going on? And the way this sunshine out here, it might be a nice day out here in um DC. It might be a nice day out here in DC. I know my girl, my cookie girl, she at a um event right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I always cook for him. And like if I'm not cooking a meal, I'm a two-person cooker. Me and Jackson, if I'm not cooking a meal, I'm a two-person cooker. Like last night, you know, Friday night, my son, you know, everybody got different days off. One of my sons, Friday is his day off of work. He was in his bedroom. <laughs> right before 8 o'clock, before we went to um, Discord for the music jam. Oh, it rained all last night. The 420 Fest is at RK. I know Tia told me. Girl, you think I'm going over here to that 420 Fest at RK Stadium? Yeah, Tia told me this morning. You know they over at the RK Stadium giving away free joints. I said, they keep on giving away free joints. I've never been there, never going to go. It's not worth it. When if you do do it, you can get it yourself. They go over there with all them people just to get a free, um, if they still call them joints. Um... But um, if they still call it, joy. but yeah, so like last night before we did the music jam, you got Amazon Prime. Um, how you add to your TV? If you got a smart TV, just download the Amazon Prime app and log in. That's all. If you got a smart TV or a Roku, just download the app and log in to your Amazon Prime. It's right there on your TV. And you go from there. Um, and uh, a lot of people who knew got Amazon Prime don't know that they have, um, you look at the movies and stuff too. Amazon Prime opens you up to their whole website. Everything except for their music. I think the music you pay separate and I think the books you pay a little something separate. But it opens you up to the um, to all the movies. And all all the movies and all, and all the little teeny extra um apps through Amazon, like MGM Plus through Amazon. Um, so last night, like I said, one of my sons was off on a Friday night. And around about 7.30, I was in the kitchen. Uh, I, yes, it's good. And I was in the kitchen. And uh, my son come out there tomorrow. What I'm smelling out here? What you out here cooking? Because I was getting ready for DC Lisa to come on and do the music jam. So it was like 7.20 or something like that before 8 o'clock. And Jackson was hungry. And granted, y'all, don't get after me. We ain't had no breakfast. I got to get my eating under control, especially since I take medicine. We didn't have no breakfast. I, For some reason, y'all y'all can believe it or you choose not to believe it. I am a plus size woman but i do not eat like that i do not and it's also it seemed like the older i am i really don't be tripping off of food so last night when i told jackson i said oh andre go live with um 
DC cool AD to the thing. Jocelyn said, Mom. I said, What? He said, It's 7 15 and we still ain't eight all day. And I said, Oh my goodness, Jackson. I said, I ain't feed you today. He said, No. He said, You ain't feed you either. I said, Damn. I said, what time is it? He said, it's almost 7.30. I said, and I'm about to go on Discord. I said, all right. He said, could you make us some steak or some sausage, some eggs or something? <laughs> My man was begging for his life. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I said, come on, let's go to the kitchen. So we went to the kitchen last night before I went on, before 8 o'clock. And we was in there cooking at... Uh, my business is those two, I know. And uh, so my and so we went in the kitchen last night, and um, I went there. I said, "All right, let's make steakums." My son came out tomorrow. What y'all doing in here? I smell it something good. I see him making me and Jackson some steakums, and my son peeping on the stove. You ain't make me none. And um, <clears throat> Jackson and um, I said no. I said because I'm about to go live and Discord. I got a movie night plan. I got music. I said I'm making for me and Jackson. Jackson said yeah because we didn't even eat no breakfast and this is our breakfast, lunch and dinner. I said yeah. He ain't gonna never let me live that down. I said hey KG. I said because that's the longest I ever took the to cook. I mean me and Jackson we eat late, eat late all the time. I mean I eat at three o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock. And I and I had and I could have been up since eight, nine, and ten. And um, but that's what I do when I'm just when, when it's just two of us, I only cook for me and Jackson when I don't have a full meal. But I also told Jackson yesterday too, you could have came in here and cooked these 60 second steakums. I said, you sit around, <clears throat> excuse me, and wait on me to feed you. If I don't feed him, my baby don't eat. If he don't got no money, his cash out, he don't eat. And I be like, he be like, I waiting on you. And, and you know, and it be times like like yesterday, I probably could went yesterday without even eating. Or until my until it got to it dawned on me, or until I got hungry later on or something. But I didn't, but that was the latest I ever late, you know, lately to wait. And it was like 7:30 at night and just getting our first meal of the day. And excuse me. And so Jackson was mad. <clears throat> But I gotta, I gotta, um, I gotta get that together. I'm not that. Sometimes I do, cause I did it. And as a matter of fact, I did it to Jackson like a week or two ago. His head was hurting, and he said he had a headache. And I say, like, why? Um, he was like, Mom, you know we ain't eight, and I think this time was like five o'clock. He said we ain't eat. He said, and last night, and then the night before. He said, I fell asleep without eating dinner or eating nothing. I said, you sure did because you went to sleep. You was knocked out. And so his head was hurting. So I had to get up at 5 o'clock and make him something to eat. So I I had experienced it. I haven't experienced it in a long time. Because sometimes I think my body is used to me, my crazy eating hours. CT said, that's my son too. He won't even spend the money on his buying some food. Nope. Nope. Jackson, 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 the same way. He, he won't. And I say, I say, I told him, and I tell him all the time, you will starve messing around with me. Because you know I don't eat like that. You know, I, I try not to eat, and I eat so late when I do realize it. And you know what? And it's not even intentional. That's the sad thing about it, that I don't do it intentionally. I don't realize half the time that I'm supposed to eat. Hey, Karen Jenkins, that's that's so crazy. Now, I don't know if that's a mental thing, a forgetfulness thing, but half the time, I don't realize that I'm supposed to even eat until I realize it, and it'd be real late. It will be real late. No, I don't microwave stuff for him to microwave. I buy microwave stuff. Now, it's like he got pieces in there. He got some people. My grandson will go in the kitchen and cook his own fried chicken. You are so lucky, J. Poo. My cousin daughter do the same thing. She 13. She cook. It's just her and her mother. My good 13 year old cousin, she cooks for her mother. She do all the cooking for her mother when her mother ain't cooking big meals. She cooks for her mother and her in between. I keep telling the girl, if you don't get that girl used to channel, that little girl could bake and cook. At 13, 13 years old, and she be cooking serious food, okay? And um, uh, what I did, I coddled. 
Hey, she's so um, dramatic. I cuddled with that none of my sons cook. They could cook a little bit, but for the foremost, they wait on me. Even the ones here in the house on their days all. Uh, so I said, my son, people, I mean, you ain't cooking? I said, well, I got to cook all the time. Um, Because it's your job. Girl, I'm going to tell you, it's my job to cook. That made me don't even cook even more. <laughs> don't tell me it's my job to cook. Fufu always tell me that we get hungry. Don't tell me it's my job to cook because, <laughs> Bama, you really won't get to eat. My old son could be, hey. And you built, look, Simba said, if I live with you, I won't cook either. I know you really won't get to eat. And, 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 and my cousin, my cousin on telephone, she told my cousin, I'd be near her like this. I told her all the time from Atlanta. She said, you're a good mother. You're a good mother. Especially, I've been in the kitchen at 11 o'clock at night sometimes cooking. She said, you in that kitchen cooking for them grown-ass men. I said, Vanessa, I said, I'm so used to it. I say, I just, I say, I just do it. Cause sometimes like me and Jackson will eat early on in the day. And I got three boys that don't get home till after 12 at night from working. And if they call me around 10 o'clock, they be like, mom, I ain't ate all day. Can you please have some cooked by the time we get home? And I know they get off at 11. I will go in the kitchen at 10 30. And start cooking them something. So when they get home by 11 45, 12 o'clock, the food be nice and hot. And my cousin's like, What you doing? I said, Here cooking them something to eat. She said, Who? I said, The boys, they all on their way home from work and they were hungry. And she said, Girl, she said, Oh, you better than I am. There's no way I'd be at 12 o'clock at night making no meals for no grown ass men. I said, Nessa, I can't help it. I say I do it. I, I do it. I don't do it all the time, but at least once or twice out the week. If they call me and um they say, Mom, I haven't eaten and I'm hungry. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday, Ken. Um, um Karen Jenkins. I will and especially I have to fill up to it. Look, I'm hungry now, but I can't cook. Nothing because I'm in um what's that? A oh, Sabbath day. Oh yeah, it's Sabbath too for my um you right, you know how many best mom they pass? It's Sabbath too for my um my son and his wife and my granddaughter they Saturday. Yeah, so but I so it also too depends on how I'm feeling, you know, because they'll call me so I, they had called me a plenty of times. I'd be like, I don't feel like cooking nothing. Y'all better stop somewhere and get something to eat. I have done that too. So it also depends on how my spirit is hitting me when I get up and do that when they call me. Because I had I had told them no. On certain occasions, and on certain occasions, you know, I was like, okay, I'll do it. I, you know, what y'all want, and they'll tell me, and I go do it, you know, do it and stuff. So it's not, it's, like I told my cousin, it's not like I do it all the time because I had said no plenty of times. I'm in the bed, I ain't getting up, I don't feel like cooking. Y'all better stop somewhere. I done done that, and then I had done it where I said, okay, I, you know, I'll do it. They'll be ready when y'all get home. I'm telling you, oh, excuse me, this is the greatest thing. <laughs> that is like Michael White now. When we are all living together, Michael White now, um, she turned Michael into a cook because, um, you know, I don't eat everybody cooking. And so to this day, she still called me because she called me Tonton. -ton. She was like, Tonton. I'd be like, what she said? How you cook it? How you cook it? Because Michael said, my mother don't cook it this way. Like her yams. See, I had to get her my yams recipe. She said, because Michael told me, my mother don't cook it this way. And so I had to get her, I had to give her um, my yams recipe and my macaroni and cheese recipe <laughs> for Michael. But other than that, Michael be on point with the other stuff that she cooked. 
because, oh, and my potato salad and my coleslaw. So I had to give my daughter-in-law four recipes, which is my potato salad, my coleslaw, my gas, and my macaroni. And she still say, even to her, her own best self, she'd be like, Tom, Tom, it still don't taste like yours. I said, well, I gave you the exact recipe. You, what you want me to tell you? I don't know. But, um... Those are the four things I had to get my daughter-in-law. And other than that, um, Michael eat everything else she cooked. And um, and he became a cook himself because he cooks for her on days. They, they like switch up cooking stuff. But I, I could say I only had to give her four recipes. And even when she make them, she still say, it don't taste like yours, Tauntaun. It don't taste like yours. I said, well, you 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 know, it, it's good enough. Michael will eat it. But Michael tell you, yeah, this still ain't my mother's. I said, Michael, but you don't tell your wife that. I said, don't tell your wife that. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said, you don't tell your wife that. He said, because she know. She said. <laughs> Brandon doing good. I talked to Brandon this morning. Um, he doing overtime at work today. He called, so he rolled in to work with the boys. So, which I don't know, all my sons do security. Every last one of my sons is, is a branch of security from arm to unarmed, and three of them work together. So they um they work together. They drive to work together. I don't know. We can't. Um, say I've been trying a lot of your recipe, and my children said they love it. So continue cooking and. And so, and copy your recipe, especially your cakes. They love the cakes. Oh, thank you, Kern. Yeah, so um, they all rolled out the day to work together. They went to go pick Brandon up. Uh, Brandon lived five minutes away from me. Brandon lives so close to me, he could he, he could walk if he wants to. She said, I have to make my own menu. I can't compete to nobody's mother. I know that's right. Uh, I told Brandon, you live across the street from me. You don't even come visit your mother. He calls me every other day, but he will not. I walk over there. You live too far in. Because even though I live like right one stoplight away from Brandon, but when you come to where I live, I live up inside and down in the back of my complex. And no, you wouldn't want to walk. Once you get to my complex and you enter... You wouldn't wanna um uh, you wouldn't wanna walk into my complex either because I'm not in the front. I'm way hella in the back. Way hella in the back. And um uh, he said, I'm not walking all the way back there. <laughs> uh, I know, Taylor. I tried the only way I'm doing I'm about to go visit Brandon, girl. I'm not gonna visit Brandon and Brandon off days don't coincide with the work days of my other sons. So Brandon and the days that he off with the Saturdays and Sundays, it's no vehicle here for me to go to his house. Cause one day for sure, two for I'm not walking to his house. I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. That's why I be telling him to walk to me. Um, I live 25 minutes away from New Life Journey on a good day. I live about 25 minutes away from her. It's so she said it's 25, almost 30 minutes, but it's like 25 to 25 minutes away from my sister. She don't like coming over here either. She said, girl, you all the way on the other side. You 25 minutes away from me. <laughs> she be complaining. <laughs> I was like, girl, if you don't bring your butt on a good day, it's not even 25 minutes. There's no traffic. It's probably a good 15 or 20. You good. Just turn some, um, just turn some music on. You'll be here before you know it. Hey, what's up? Good afternoon. Glad to see you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We ain't doing nothing. Oh, uh, have a good day at work, Tasha. We not doing nothing but talking nothing. I don't have no topic today. I'm trying to get some energy together so I can entertain. Oh, you just woke up. And after, hey, Lachelle, I feel like I want to just go back to sleep. <laughs> oh, you've been working like a dog. You know, make, hey, make that money. Don't let that money make you. What movie is that from, y'all? Hey, sis, 
Make that money. Don't let that money make you. What movie that from? Them the one-liners. I just did a peach cobbler video XO in that in my food contest, and I had peach cobbler left in my house for yes. <laughs> I had, um I. Um, I ain't do nothing, Taylor. I told you I don't even want no company. <laughs> I was asleep. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do a peach car video no time. So I just did one like a couple of weeks ago in a food contest. And if my, everybody in my house on each peach cobbler. And I really end up throwing half of it away. I like peach cobbler, but I couldn't eat that whole peach cobbler. Um... And my sons, them, they like it, but they don't like it like that. And Tia never came to get it like she's supposed to. Like I told you, I'm 25 minutes away from her, and she ain't never come. So half that peach cobbler end up going in the trash, and I hate wasting stuff. So um, I don't know when the next time I'm going to make one. But the recipe is up online, so you most definitely can look it up. Yes, thank you, Low Life. I always turn my cash shop up because I don't put up my super chat because I ain't trying to get you to none of the money. Keep it all for your girl. Um, yes, but um, I ain't got nothing going on. I ain't got plans stuff. But, but you know, I am now that I'm talking to you guys. I am feeling a little bit. Uh uh. Yeah, I know. Though she like when she's for her, I am feeling a little bit better because I'm talking to you guys. I'm slowly um, I'm slowly waking up. I gotta get part two out here, Jay Poo. I'm slowly waking up. I'm slowly feeling some energy to, um, to wake up. I got to get part two out here. It's not going the way I thought it was going to go, but I'm not giving up on it. I, 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 the part two, the second book is written. It's just sitting because I have to pay. I got people to help me with my book, but the, but I have to pay my girl SA Graphic. Hey, Humble Lion, and I don't have the money to pay her right now. It costs a little bit over $300, almost $400 for, for her to do her part. And I don't have the money right now to give her to do her part. So my children's book, JJ, second book is kind of just sitting in the wind until I get an extra $300 to from this come up. But um, I'm hoping, hope, I'm hoping, that's why I'm pushing out these videos. That's why I try to be consistent on these videos. That's why I'm trying to put out clothing haul. I'm trying to see a change in my income so that I can because I am very anxious. Someone asked me who actually um, emailed me a couple of days ago. Miss T, I ain't trying to rush you, but um, when JJ's second book come out, because my grandson really loved it, and he done read it a couple of times, I said, girl, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't, what, um, what um, essay graphic do, I don't know how to do. She does the illustration, and you know that illustration was popping in that book. She does the illustration, and she put it up on Amazon and all that stuff. She, I mean, I had two cookbooks. Um, It's time for me to do another one. It's really time for me to do another one because I had some more recipes that I have done since then, some recipes that I had to tweak and, um, and more desserts because my last cookbook didn't have a whole lot of desserts in it. And I done made so many more desserts since then. I really want to do another cookbook. And I think I'm going to get with SA Graphic to see how much. Yes, there's some x mail Miss them bingo days. Yes. And see how much will she charge me to do a cookbook. Because the type of cookbook I want. I'ma see, can you even get it done? I want the cookbook with those spirals. You know, the cookbook I had, it's like, my two cookbooks is like, you know, it's the flat cookbook of like a book. I want a spiral cookbook, like on not the hard pages, but the paper page, and they got the got the holes. I want a spiral cookbook. Y'all know what a spiral cookbook is? I want a spiral, that's my next cookbook. I think I... I want a spiral cookbook. And then I think I'm better. I think I'm better where I'm at. You should you see at KG, it's cheaper to do stuff on Amazon because they don't charge you up front. They get their money on the back end. That's the whole thing. It's cheaper. The part that's just a little expensive is that 
uh, paying the person to uh, to do the editing and putting it together and all that stuff. That's the part you got to pay. I don't mind putting it on Amazon or either, I think, no uh, Barnes & Noble or something because they don't, you don't have, they don't charge you to put it on their site. They get their money on the back end from the sales, which is very helpful. Uh, since with me, I have to have an editor because I'm the type of person, I just write. Uh, is that Amazon link the current cookbook link? Yes, it is. I just write. And then when I write, I give it to the person, to my, my editor, actually, I got a new editor. So my new editor's not charging me anything. They good, but they tear easy. Oh, yeah, that's true too. But they look more fancy. I like the look of them. I like the look of it though. But it's, it's, it's the money for the, for the illustration. And that's, and that's, and I, you know, I can't take away from the body worker. She does a beautiful job. Her illustration is good. The characters is good. And, 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 and it's so good. So, and actually my new book for JJ, I added, I added in two extra characters that she will have to find and we have to research and I got to approve. So it's not easy. Yeah, I want the ones with the thick paper. Yeah, almost like, remember I said not really thick, but the paper almost like is in the bind. It's almost like almost like a solid white cardboard type like that. I was trying to figure out do Amazon um, um, have it. You, we could put it together like that. That's what, I, that's what I want like that. Now with the paper, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Exactly. That's how I want my next cookbook to be in the spirals with the little solid white type of um. Yeah, you have a journal like that. Yeah, that's how I want my next cookbook to be. Well, it's not something something new to do. Are you talking about like I when it comes to a book and writing, I will always need a um, I will always need a um a um. What's that thing? An editor. Someone to edit for me and proofread it. Because, you know, when you write in a book, I'm just writing. I'm not an English major and stuff like that. I didn't go to school to be an English major. Writing just always has been a hobby of mine. But I got to make sure that I'm using the right there and there, um, the right twos and twos and... Um, uh, no, the illustration, she did that. I have an illustrator. That, um, in the cookbook, it's my own pictures. But we're talking about the children's book. The children's book is, um, uh, is I have an illustrator who did, who, who came up with those characters and all that stuff. So I have to get someone. Yeah, I don't use the right grammar. But when the person read it and they proofreading it and they editing it, they reading it and they know exactly which word I might have T H E R E and it's supposed to be T H E I R, you know what I'm saying? And so they'll know which one to put in. I might have two O and maybe supposed to be two T W O or T O O, you know. So they'll have, and I might have win and it may be W I N D seven W I N or W, you know. So it's just like, yeah, I know the words on. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all know the words on how they be and all that stuff. So, yeah, so what I was told, what I was told, but I don't have to pay my editor. At first, SA Graphics, she was doing the editing and the illustration. So, to cut her price in half, I got somebody else who, who's an English major who, who I was a friend of mine to do my editing, and I don't have to pay her anything. So, that's to cut my price in half. Not for my book teller, I can't. Cause like I said, I'm not an English major. I'm English major. I'm not showing if I'm using the right grammar, the right punctuations and colons and marks, and I don't have no run on sentences and all that type of stuff. Cause I like writing, but I didn't go to school for. It. And when you write, you just can't put just like anything out there. You know, people will critique you because you know people all of a sudden. Everybody gonna become a professional something. You know, every time you do something, so everybody and their mother is now a professional English teacher. 
I ain't got time for all these professional English teachers with no degrees and ain't never been in the classroom to come after me. Girl, you know you 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 use own and poke you know. <laughs> Oh, oh! Thank you, KG. Most definitely hit me up, KG. DMV Strong. I know that's right. Thank you so much. I I can most definitely use her extra editor. Yes, cause like I said, JJ's um JJ's second book is done. Actually, his third book is done. I, I did so well because I was so motivated, so excited. I actually wrote them books, wrote JJ's stories just like that. Yeah, and I and I so actually I got three books sitting in my notes that's ready to go, but finance is holding me back from letting them go. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's why I said let me know when you build a house. <laughs> hey, I know that's why I tell it. <laughs> So and everything is in my wheelhouse. It's ready to go. I just got to get the finances in. But the finances is that I'm pushing out videos. The way I make my money is through YouTube. And what I'm doing, I'm doing my content. I'm pushing out videos. I'm being consistent. You're getting two food videos a week on the Food Channel. We're getting the Everyday Lives, the On the Couch. I got my new segment on my product product reviews. And shout out to... um. Miss Brown, Miss Brown, I do not see you in here. Uh, Miss Brown working from home today, and she said she'd better do on the couch. But Miss Brown bought the under the desk elliptical for her mom. And just like Miss Wilder, I think that's Faith Wilder who bought it, she also got $40 off plus my 15% discount, and she got the gray one. So shout out to her, shout out to everyone um who's been buying these products you just don't know how much it um i just don't know how much it means to me um even though all these products that you guys buy i appreciate it so much it will allow me to, to work with them even more for them to give me more things so thank you so much for you guys buying it i actually um going to be using my machine today i said i'm going to be used today because i ain't going to tell i like i i child I'm going to get this machine to work out. I tell, and my son said, y'all don't stand on it. Tia thought it was the stand-up ones. I said, it's not the stand-up one that you see on TikTok. I wouldn't be able to balance myself on that stand-up one. No handles, no nothing. you just standing on it and doing like this. I said, this is the sit-down one. But like I say, it works your cores. It works your back muscles, your legs, your thighs. It works your hips. And your, it, you, um, it gives, makes you twist. So it has, even though it's just working your legs, but it, like I said yesterday, it moves all the way up to your body because it works your, it makes you, when you're doing it, it be moving you like this. So you get really getting in your core in. You really get cardio in because you still moving your upper body. And then that gets you, you, if you do it for how long you do it, you get to sweating down your back. So this little thing may be underneath your desk or underneath your office or sitting by your bedside. But it's a comfortable and a good workout. And it's going to make you feel like, whew, I just work out because you're sweating. And anytime you can pull a sweat from an exercise, you're doing something, okay? So anybody else need this, go out and get your under desk elliptical because my I don't know anything. That $40 off, that was a surprise by both the young women who bought it. I didn't know anything about that. But my 15% discount ends on April the 25th. My discount portion ends on April the 25th. So if you got it, y'all, if you want it, you've been looking for a quick and easy, not too strenuous exercise, um, that, that would be for you. That would be for you. Use my code into um, the 25th and you get 15% off. You get 15% off. And then right now they got the extra $40 off. I didn't know anything about that. That was a good surprise. So the young ladies end up paying like $150 something because it costs like $219. So yeah. And this allows me to, you know, in the future work with this, that company again is something bigger or better, you know, by showing, okay, she could sell. 
she could sell. She getting sales in. So, yes. So, thank you, guys. And I think your mom's going to love it. I need some more water. My ice got to melt. All this talking. So, yeah. So, I got things in the work. Unfortunately, we just got to be. I just. I just got to be a little more patient with my stuff coming out, with my things coming out. Once I get everything and see it different in my channel and revenue and stuff like that, I be to, I be to allocate funds in different directions to do different things. But other than that, yeah, I hear the birds twerping, the sun going up and down. But I really can't wait, y'all, to fix my patio up. And go outside. You know, patio you're going to be fixed up before my dad going to hold house with my living room. Because there's a couple of chairs you can put out there. And I, I'm so excited to go sit outside when this weather changing. And just to go sit outside on my patio. Castle where to sit. Yeah, the birds be twerking like crazy around here. I'm saying because I got apartment complexes up the hill behind me. That apartment complex is busy, honey. I be hearing the children outside. I love to hear the sound of the children play. That is, that's like the best enjoyable sound. I be hearing the children outside giggling. You can tell they running because the way you can hear that, you can hear it in their voice. I love to hear the children outside playing. You be hearing the dogs barking. I'm like, I don't know what's going on in that complex up there, but they be having a good time at that complex. I don't know. Uh, oh, Kern. I come on during the day. I try to come on in the morning before 12. In the morning before 12. Like somebody playing music now. Y'all hear the music, the thumping? Y'all hear that? Y'all hear the music? They be, they, that complex over there. <laughs> they, they, they be partying up over that complex over the hilltop. I don't know what's over there. I hear that they play, somebody playing music there. Um, they just, I do, I need another water. I need water to add on top of my ice. But, um, yes, yeah, so I can't wait till the weather change. Yeah, they bumping. I can't hear what it's playing, but you know it's music. You can hear the bumping of the music. I'm telling you. Over the hilltop, over that hill out there. I don't know what they got it going on, but it's Saturday. And I haven't done this in such a long time. And I told you guys I want to get a radio. Because when back in when I'm my early 30s and my early 20s and stuff, I used to do that too on Saturdays. Raise your hand. Who used to get up on a Saturday? You open. I used to open my windows, side my, especially in the summertime. Open up my patio with the screen in it and play music and clean. Uh, what time is it here? I have no idea. Um, KG, what time is it here? KG from here to DMV. Ah, he's like gonna make a little pan of macaroni and cheese. And I haven't done that in that used to be the best cleaning. That used to be the best cleaning in the summertime. Man, it's 410. It's 410, whoever asks, babe. It's 410. That used to be the best cleaning summertime. I used to light an incense. I used to get them real big long incense from the corner store or liquor store. You get three, four dollars. And get them real long incense. I still do that. I haven't done that in a long time, Cynthia. I said, like the incense. My kids used to be running back and forth outside. And I'd be yelling at them. Y'all been getting clean that room up. And I had my um music blasting. Eva I used to have the radio. Oh, baby. Remember BET and the jukebox and all that stuff. Be having or be having a video channel playing. And you be backing, oh, backing, oh, remember, remember Copy Fresh? Y'all, that's what it used to, I should be all into it. What's up, Tiana? 
What's up, boo? This ice would be on and to it, y'all. You should be clean. Man, you should take that carpet fresh. Put your carpet fresh all over the floor. Your bread, your TV, um, and your um, your music loud and your incense burning. The the windows open and the carpet fresh all on the floor. Man, you been the cleaning man. Oh, we don't clean like that no more. I clean like that no more, but I don't clean like that no more. You still get up on the circle. That's like, that's the best way. It just gets your blood pumping. And then you got all the bleaches and um, people say don't mix up, but y'all know us black folks. We be a, we, we are mixologists when it comes to our cleaning supply. Yeah, do you like, yes, I do like shopping at thrift store. I used to go to thrift store my, my cousin all the time. Yeah, I said, cut the fan on and relax in front of the fan, sit in your living room and just look around. Like, damn, you be smiling and proud because shit clean. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's clean. And then you just look at your TV and, that's what that, and that was your day. Yes, 106 in Park Countdown. Yes, yes, yes. You just look at that. Um, what's her name? Um, um, Frida or what was her name? Um... Dad, I can't think of the girl name. Yes, man, I said, man, I love me some copper fresh. I had just told my kids, uh, free. Yes, we're free. And yes, I had just told my kids. I said, I said, because I'm hand sweeping. I've been sweeping my rug. My girl, S.A. Grep, is trying to find me a vacuum um, sponsorship. I said, girl, I need me a vacuum sponsorship. She had one for me, but when she had one for me, I didn't have a vacuum, so I turned it down. So she's into trying to find me another vacuum sponsorship. I said, because I've been here hand sweeping this rug. And when I be hand sweeping, I said, oh, my next grocery haul, I'm going to see they still make carpet fresh. I said, that's a big man. And yeah, we, man, we, we said, your house ain't clean until it smell like house cleaner. Until I'm smelling some lemon, lemon, lemon fresh. That What's that big ball hit, man? Mr. Clean and some Ajax and some bleach. And Windex for the mirrors and got your newspaper wiping your mirrors down. Um, and you got your Mr. Clean. Then they came out with Fabioso. I never used Pine Saw. Pine Saw was so strong to me. But when they came out with Lemon Pine Saw, I used a tiny bit of that. Yes, you still use Copper Fresh. That's good. That means they still make it because I want to get me some Copper Fresh. Yeah, some pine salt with Mr. Clean and some bleach. Be mixing that stuff up in a bucket and grab your Windex. And who used to use Murphy Oil Soap? Um, the Murphy Oil Spray for the wood furniture. <laughs> Had the Murphy Oil Spray burnt, um, um, down your wood furniture. Back in the day when coffee tables, before they came out with all these glass coffee tables, you used to have the wooden coffee tables and stuff. Man, using that, um, yes. Child, <coughs> clean up used to be fun. I used to love it. Mm. I had a little baking soda on the carpet and vacuum. Yes, so I, I, so I sweep my rug, and I hate sweeping. Because when I be sweeping, as soon as it had Murphy oil soap on the wood floors, yes, girl, I used the Murphy oil soap on the wooden part of my floors because I used to have aerial rugs down and the wood used to be on the outside. Girl, use that Murphy oil soap. Who had to mop the mop? And then you had the sponge for your Murphy. You, uh, I still, and it was the bumping of the music on the weekends. Yes. And that's how Brandon cleaned up too with the music, cause that's how we grew up cleaning up with the music and all this stuff. Man, it was cr it's crazy. But what I don't like is that um, when I be sweeping my rug, that's why I want to get a vacuum. When I be sweeping my rug, they got these new style brooms now because we used to have the straw broom. I used I used to love the straw broom, but I used to hate the straw broom. So when I be sweeping my rug, just as I get a rhythm. Next thing you know, I'm twisting every every five minutes. As soon as I get a rhythm, we're sweeping the rug, sweeping the rug. God dang it! If not the the the, the rug coming loose from the um the handle, these new brooms they untwistable. So you as soon as you get a rhythm, and I'm sweeping my rug and everything in my bedroom, I be like, damn it! 
and I got twisted um and then it get and then it gets so much stuff connected to it you gotta pull the stuff off the broom and throw it in the trash all right like, man your girl gonna get her a copy but I used to love straw brooms. I don't know if they still make straw brooms. Straw brooms are heavy duty with that thick piece of wood handle that all that straw. We had we grew up with straw brooms. And they used to get the job done. But they used to use pieces of straw used to come out of them. But they were good for sweeping the rug. And then my mother used to wet sweep. When she used to have that little, little teeny prickle, little plastic broom, my mother used to wet sweep to make her rug smell good. She'd make her little solution in her rug, and she dip the tips of her broom in her rug, and she sweet. She used to wet sweep. So I used straw brooms, um, straw brooks from outside then. Yes, my mother used to wet sweep everything, man. Uh, look, I'm clean, cleaning and dancing was my exercise. It was. Man, you get a whole house because you walk, you're going through the whole house on a Saturday. On Saturday mornings, after my mother fed us breakfast and we eating uh, cartoons, after, and she, it, it, was a, it was a wrap. Time to turn the cartoons on, start cleaning up, changing your sheets. I don't know how many weeks time you're supposed to change your sheets, but we change our sheets every Saturday. My mom used to, hey, what them old people do, I don't know. My mom used to sweep, my mother used to um, damp sweep her rugs. She used to um, make her little smell good solution, dip the tip of her little plastic brooms in there, and she used to wet sweep her rugs. And she said, she said, get the dirt up for her, but that can only be in her head. You couldn't walk on the rug. This is like if you just, um... Did a shampoo. Don't walk on my rug. I just wet swept my rug. Had to get it clean. And yeah. And she'll put turn a fan towards her rug. And the rug is clean. And you could not step in that living room for two, three hours until that her rug was clean. And she was the one to let you know, hey, Susie Q. She was the one to let you know whether or not that rug. I know, I know you meant bro. <laughs> And she would be the one that let you know, okay, it's dry. Y'all can walk down. Yes. So I'm going to try that. Yes. I'm going to try. These other people. And then only thing I didn't like about cleaning up. Okay, like I said, we change our sheets every Saturday. Every Saturday, you change your pillowcase. You change your seat. You wash your blanket. You wash your comforter. Um... But we ain't wash our comfort every Saturday. I think our comforts got washed like every two or three weeks. The comforters, they didn't get washed every week. But every Saturday, you did get clean sheets. And um, what else did I say about my mother? I forgot. Girl, what's wrong with the brain? Oh, I used to hate the once a month wall cleaning. Oh, y'all. Did y'all mother make y'all wash walls? I'm like, we so poor, we can't buy no paint. Man, we had once a month, my mother had a schedule. We washed walls. I am not lying. That was my childhood. Mom, I grew up in a house. My mom was a Felix Unger. And she got that from her mother. My mother is a clean, very, my mother was a very clean woman. You could not leave a, a, a cup in her sink. My mother was a very clean woman. But my mother's house was so clean, you could waste something to pick it up and eat it and guarantee you, you ain't, you ain't getting sick or nothing. People used to talk about my mother. How my mother used to get paid to clean up people's houses when she felt like it. My mother was a very clean woman. They call her Felix Unger. And to the day she left this earth, and to she was up to the point with that, she couldn't clean for herself no more. My mother was a very clean woman. She loved the clean home. She, she, her day would not sit right. And oh my God, not, not even the um, clean the walls once a month. How about the um? Uh, my mother used to always switch her furniture around. How many times? I used to say in my head growing up, you'll go home, go to school, and come back. The living room was switched around. How many times can you switch the living room around? 
My mother would switch a whole living room around. And I used to thank God sometimes she should do it when we was at school and you come back, living room would switch around. But when you walk into the home, it be looking good because the living room switch around. You know she done cleaned up. Like, oh, it looks so good in here. And then, you know, the switch around, you'll get used to it until a month later. You realize, and then on a Saturday, ah, oh, y'all come help me move this sofa and lift this up, if I can move the rug and help me move to take everything off the off the vet or the mantelpiece, cause I'ma move this to this corner. Man, I couldn't stand wall cleaning. I couldn't stand the switching of the furniture. It's it's only the living room is only so big. I swear to you. And it never been the same way twice. And if I'm lying, I'm dying. If I'm lying, I'm dying. It never been the same way twice. Somehow in her head and her metric size of her living room, she was all, always able to make a different switcheroo in that damn living room. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I'm telling you, I'm telling you now. I was like, this woman is switching around furniture. And don't trust, she should do her bedroom the same way. Yeah, so when I say bedroom, you say bedroom, Aries. She should do her bedroom the same way. Don't you help me switch around my bedroom? It makes it look good and different. Well, my grandmother did the plastic. My mother didn't do the plastic and two. She got to be got in her got in her early her late sixties. Cause I want I was about to say her um her early seventies, but my mom passed when she was seventy. But um in her late sixties, she stopped putting plastic on her furniture. Why? But nobody wants to spill the waste on. It. I really don't want nobody sitting on it. Why did you buy it then? Why? My mother ain't want nobody sitting on her furniture at all. She ain't want nobody sitting on her furniture at all. Ah, oh, it was so crazy, man. I said, my mother, my mother was crazy. Oh man, I used to remember think her. That man think her used to do back in the day. Think her did my whole Christmas. Think her did my whole Christmas. I remember what I did, man, think I did my own, think I used to, I don't even know think I've been saying, I'm like that. I don't know if that's a Virgo, is that does put it like clean and rearrange and be organized. I am very unorganized, but I do like to switch things up. Your mom was younger doing the plastic thing. Girl, I, I used to love finger her, finger her, man, finger her did, used to do my whole Christmas. Somebody said, who was in the J. Poole? Oh, somebody asked J. Poole a question. And they still around. Yeah, exactly. Because I just did Finger Hut back in, um, I got my granddaughter something from them from Finger Hut. And I east, I think she was even three. I got her a train for Christmas. My, I remember the, um, the Palisade on the furniture. The whole plus body. Your grandma used to live off of Finger Hut. Oh my goodness. My grandparents. See, they don't got stuff like this. I remember nice living with my we used to live with my grandparents. They had a furniture man. Old a uh, old a uh, old gentleman, Caucasian gentleman. I I can't remember his name, but I remember this so clearly when I was like little bit under 10. Uh, Cause my mother started getting stuff from the furniture man too. My grandparents, times was different in the early eighties and stuff when I was growing up. I grew up in the seventies and the eighties as a kid. And my grandparents, they had a furniture man, a Caucasian older man and his son used to come to our grand my grandmother's house. I, I can't say when, I can't say it was every two weeks or once a month. But they used to come and pick up their payments on their furniture. Um, that's how renting furniture was back then. They had a furniture man, and a furniture man used to come to the house. And my grandparents were real good 
It was real good with the furniture man. You know, friends with them. I never seen anything getting taken. I always saw things coming in. And they used to come every month with their little receipt book. And grandparents used to pay cash. And, and they used to give them their thing. And they used to sit and stand outside, talk for a while. And be like, all right, William, I'm out of here. See y'all next time. All this stuff. Yeah. And my grandfather, he was diligent. Whatever my grandmother wanted, she got it. I, I got the furniture man because of family-owned business. I got the furniture man and name in my head, but it just won't come out. God, I remember them saying his Because my mother started... Um, my mother started getting used to him and getting furniture with him. And he would give the stuff on credit. And then you just paid. And they, they used to come. They used to come and pick their money up and give you the receipt. I can't think of their name now. But I know it's a Caucasian company. Yep. The insurance man too, Angela. Yep. The insurance man used to come to my grandparents' house too. And collect the insurance money. Yes, they did. The insurance man and the furniture man. You got Yes. The furniture man and their shoes man used to come to my grandparents' house. And my grandfather paid his bills. Excuse me. He worked for the government. My grandfather was an army man. He was a hard man. He was a strict man. And he believed in um, organization. And he believed in um, chastising and all that stuff. And he ended up from, he went from the army to the federal government. He's worked for the printing office. Then they, they make the books and all that stuff, but he's worked for the print office. He was like some type of director, big wig at the print office or whatever. But um, my grandfather used to pay his bills. The insurance man and the furniture man used to come there. And he used to pay his bill, and I just got the um, I got the uh, furniture man on tip of my tongue. I know I'm gonna end up remember him. I remember them. They used to come all the time to my grandparents' house. But that was the good old days. Life was beautiful. Life is still beautiful because life is what you make of it. We just got to be more cautious and and watch our surroundings and, and have more faith in the man upstairs. Because I ain't going to say life used to be beautiful because life is beautiful. Because one, I woke up this morning. So I'm not even going to think like that. But the, the nostalgic, the nostalgia of what life used to be compared to now, I mean, it is wonderful. It is a beautiful thought, you know. But life is good because you won't. And your life is what you make of it. Yeah, that was my auntie. My aunt had my auntie who passed. She had a she <clears throat> she started out with a clean and organized house. Um, because she used to have so much of everything. Her house was, you couldn't say it was dirty, but it was cluttered. And in my eyes, cluttered was dirty. I think that was a word that they came up. Um, I think that's the word that they came up with to avoid to say your house dirty. They'll say it's cluttered. But clutter is clutter. And clutter makes two. My mother couldn't stand going to my aunt's house. My aunt was a hoarder. And it, but it was a hoarder up with neatness. It wasn't like the hoarders that you see on a on the TV show hoarder like that. But it was still a cluttered environment with things stacked up. And it's like, don't know one person need all this. It was just too much. Or stuff that you know that you're not even gonna use again. But that was my aunt house. And two, she because she used to be like sell she used to do vending. On the weekend, so she used to be a vendor, and she go out to the drift stores, and people call her, and and she go pick stuff up from people, and never get half the stuff to the vendor stand, but yet refuse to um throw it away. She used to get broken stuff tomorrow. No, I'm gonna get that fixed, and when I get that fixed, that gonna get some good money on my vendor stand. I'm putting that on my stand. Just leave that alone. <laughs> Pepper Chef. I never heard of Pepper Chef. Uh, that's that that used to be my aunt. And I had and you know, Lord, yeah, when she left this earth right after my mother, her house was a hot mess. Her house was a hot mess. They had to go in. Oh my god, my aunt house was I ain't oh, my aunt house was a hot mess. At that point, she was a hoarder, like you saw on TV. At that point, when she left this earth um, almost three years ago, a month after my mother, and we had to go in her house, 
it was a hoarder house. When she was younger, it was more maintained. It didn't look bad, but it was still too much. But it, as she got older, it became just it became just like the TV show, y'all. And, and they had my cousin and her daughter. May she rest in peace. They had to hire people to go in, to gut it, to clean it, and every it was just it was just terrible. Cause it got so bad, she wasn't even living in the house. And I said we should have called the TV show. My cousin said I don't want to be on that dang on TV show. I said this that they I think they cleaned it up for free. Um, and but um, yeah, when my aunt left this earth, her house was at, her house was literally a hoarder house. I mean the outside around the side, the backyard from the basement up to the bedroom, her liberal, you couldn't walk. It was stubborn. I said, oh my God. It was so bad. My aunt, even in her, when she was, um, you know, transitioning, she couldn't even live in the house. She was, she was living out the hotels and went to a shelter. It was just so sad because she couldn't even, um, the water had stopped working. The toilet stew had stopped flushing. It was crazy. I said, I thought I would only see this on television. I said, I did not know she was living like this. So hoarding is the real thing. And I think it's a mental thing. But when she was young, it was so organized. It was neat, but it was a lot, but it was organized. But when she when she when she passed on, hmm, it was just like you see on TV. And that, and if I'm lying, I'm dying. It was just like you see it on TV. I was like, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, her house got called on and everything. The people on her street, they call um they call housing. It's called um DCRA, Department of Consumer Regulatory Affairs, the housing division. Your yeah, house got called on. She got fines. Um, she she um she got she got she got um she everything started happening. Yeah, her when she left her son, her when she when she passed away, the, my cousin that's in the hospital. I was telling y'all about who's sick now. He had to get all that done. He ended up selling the house to the bank as is or something. But, um, yeah, it was so many liens and things. Yeah. Like I said, it ended up, hey, Crystal, at the end of her days, it, it was actually just like you see on TV, a hoarder home. From the outside to the front porch to the inside, you had to lift your legs up. To go over top of shit. And it was, I was like, oh my God. With no running work, no working toilet or nothing. It was literally just like that. But my aunt had some mental. She had some stuff going on. So those people who do that just don't, it's not, I got first hand experience. They can't help it. Some people who don't understand think they, they're doing it just to be doing it. They can't help it. And it and then it get overwhelming and overbearing and they lose control, but yet they will still bring more stuff in. They will still bring more stuff in. And they're gonna say, I saw a lady hoarder with a whole bitch of a bunch of cats. You feel like your grandparents get to that point. And they won't and, and they won't ask for help because to to them, it's nothing wrong. They're perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong. Are you looking at the same thing I'm looking at? Auntie, are you seeing the fines that are being left on your door? Are you seeing the specter man walking outside the perimeter of your home on your property? Yeah, it's just just like just like you see on hoarders, they do that in real life. That because it, it depreciates the property of your neighbors. It bring it bring unwanted animals to your neighborhood. Um, when the house is like that. And yeah, my aunt got cut on several times because it, it overflowed from the inside to the outside to her porch, stacked up with stuff to the side of the house as you walk to the back of the house. The side of the house stacked up with stuff. And then the back of the house stacked up with stuff. And, you know, people get tired of people buy their homes and they want to live in good neighborhoods and that type of stuff make, um, um, make rats and raccoons and stuff come on to other people's property that they didn't got to deal with and stuff. I was never mad. You can't be mad at nobody. 
You can't be mad at the people who's calling on them because they have a right to live clean. They, be, they have a clean area, clean neighborhood. They have a right to not to have an extra bill when they got to deal with rodents and animals coming because of this property. So we was not never mad at nobody. We understood, but you couldn't get my aunt to understand it. But at the end, you know, you know, my cousin had to take care of everything. Yeah, I like to see the end when the house is clean. Yeah. They got it. They got it together. My cousin, they had to hire people to go in and child gut that house out. This, he, he didn't salvage anything. He didn't want anything. He didn't salvage anything. He just saw everything just had to go. Everything that had, has, had to go. Didn't want anything. Didn't salvage nothing. He just, he just everything gone. Nothing in there is, was worth saving. Nothing was worth saving. Yeah. Throw it out. That's what you do. Yeah. Yes, I'm organizing everything. I need to get my closet done. Y'all can get a closet video. Because all these clothes that I'm buying from these, um, all these clothes that I got, I need to hang them up. But then I got stuff, I got buckets of stuff from my, from my, um, from my, um, from my shed, I don't want to call it a shed, my storage space. And I was just telling my two sister told me don't buy no hanger rest. See, you keep telling me don't buy no hanger rest. You said she, she said, I got about 40 plus hanger rest. She said, if not more, she bought for our brother, and my brother had a whole bunch of hang rest. She said, Don't buy no hang rest. I got you some hang rest. Girl, it's been almost two months. Excuse me. See, if I'm gonna go I'm gonna get them hang rest. Girl, I'm gonna end up buying my own hang rest because I'm gonna I wanna um so y'all gonna be getting so like I said, I got future stuff coming, future videos coming. Like I need to clean my closet. Y'all know I have a big closet. So I need to get that closet organized. I get I need to hang my clothes up and stuff. And so she but she can tell me don't but I, I really no reason I ain't really buying because I don't got the money to buy none. And then high rents are expensive. High rents are expensive. I look at them, oh my God. Um, uh, 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 living life you're not said a grown up me is very clean. Yes, so that's one reason why I'm trying to hold out because she got all those nice white plastic hangers. I don't care what color they are. She said, You care the color? I said, I don't care if they was pink and purple. Bring me them hangers. <laughs> I don't care if they was pink and purple. Bring me them hangers. Yeah, so that's what I want to do. I'm gonna get this closet together. So y'all must definitely have a video of me. I'm organizing my closet, hanging up all my outfits and all that other stuff. Well, I don't know what's a hanger rat. What's the name of a hanger? Look, let me tell you. I grew up in days of ebonics talking. That's all I ever heard the word hanger rat. Well, what you call it? A hanger? What do y'all call it? Y'all call it a hanger rat? Uh, yes, hanger. <laughs> <laughs> that's the DMV. I say to say, okay, KG, so we down. That's the DMV. And the <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. Don't be coming for me. That's how I grew up. That's why. Go keep me that hanger right in that closet. You knew exactly what it was. <laughs> Y'all say hanger, yes. When DMV, we say hanger rat. <laughs> Nobody said, what the fuck is a hanger rat? A hanger rat <laughs> is that thing with the one hook shaped like this, and you put your clothes on it, <laughs> and you hang it on a, a long piece of wood in your closet. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all making me choke uh, with me and my Ebonics and <laughs> my talk, but I never knew. That's what we call it. That's why I still call it. Jackson! I need a bottle of water. Please. Bring me a bottle of water, because this, this is ice. I'm thirsty. I got some water on top of this. Bro. Bring me a bottle of water, please. 
I am gonna make the food. Y'all gotta go. My son, I said, bring me a bottle of water. He walked through the door, talk about, I thought you was gonna make food. <laughs> <coughs> Some sausage and eggs? You still want sausage and eggs? You eat pizza? All right, so bring me a board. The pizza's an appetizer. <laughs> Okay, well, bring me some water. Okay. Yeah, he could make a bowl of cereal because I got some corn pops in there. I got some corn. But look at me some water if I can add some water in here. Yes, that, that my baby said, when you gonna cook? <laughs> I have some water, he has some food. <laughs> I got to feed this baby. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Give me a water jack so I can pull on top of here. And then he said the pizza. He said, no, he said, you go ahead and talk. I'm, I'm going to make a pizza. So I say, you don't want the sausage and eggs? He said, no, the pizza is an appetizer while you do what you do. <laughs> That's why we ain't never got no food. <laughs> My family believe in appetizers, huh? Yeah, I do got some noodles. I got some chicken noodles. I got some chicken um in there, chicken box of chicken noodles. They believe in appetizers. And trust me, when he said that's an appetizer, that tortilla pizza he gonna put in the microwave, that's a dead gone appetizer. Trust that. Cause he cause he got that sausage and egg on his mind. Cause I'm gonna make sausage and eggs and pancakes. Oh boy. Y'all be out of feed my baby. Mm. Sausage eggs and pancakes. You know I don't mind doing pancakes when it's just me and you here, cause I ain't gotta make before. I make four pancakes to get it about the get it about the way. I do not like doing pancakes, waffles, or French toast when I got a when I got a house full of sons. Because um Everybody, they want three pancakes a piece. I ain't gonna take that long. I'm about to wrap up in a minute. They like they 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 like three pancakes a piece, and you talking five people, three pancakes a piece. How many pancakes I got made? I make those many pancakes plus maybe two or three extra ones because depending on how much batter. When it's just me and Jackson, man, I'm going to make four pancakes, two pancakes of him. Two pancakes for me. That's it. Two pancakes for him. Two pancakes for me. I do not like to make pancakes and I got a house full of people unless I pull out my old girl, my griddle. I got to give me a new griddle. TikTok, oh my goodness. TikTok got this long, massive griddle I want to get. Oh my God, I told y'all TikTok will make you buy it. When I get a chance, I'm gonna get it. TikTok got this like long, massive griddle. It said, yes, girl, me. My my 20-year-old want like five pancakes. No, I don't eat but two pancakes. I eat two pancakes. And so I only eat three pancakes when I'm really, really hungry. Oh, well, that's you cook on a griddle, girl. You cook steak, you cook sausages, pancakes. You could make French toast. I don't like cooking eggs in the griddle because they be running and you be chasing them. I cook eggs on the stove. I had, but you could do fried eggs in the griddle. A griddle is a good investment, especially when you got a large family. Because like if you cook it on a stove in a pan, I could cook like two pancakes at one time in my pan. Or if I make a small enough, I probably could get three pancakes. I um, only do two. Um, only get, I can get three pancakes in the pan. But with a griddle, depends on if you get a big one. When my my electric griddle, yes, you could do um cheese steaks, fry, uh, mashed burgers. A griddle come in handy. I haven't had one in a long. And I said I ain't had one. I don't think I had one about the last four years. And I said I want to get me one, but I want to get that one from TikTok. But I don't have the counter space. I'm gonna need two counters put together. The one from TikTok, y'all, is about this long. And you do stuff at the same time. 
Yeah, so you can have the bacon and sausages on at the same time. Knock us out and did corned beef hash on the griddle. Get that nice crisp on it. Flip it. Only thing I don't like doing the griddle is scrambled eggs. I have done it a couple of times. But I'm like, no, nah, I ain't going to do it. Because you try to make that one-man shop. But, um, yeah, and I like the griddle. So when I got a family, am I making pancakes for everybody on the, on the regular size griddle? I could do up to six to seven pancakes. And that means that if I could do up to six to seven pancakes, I only have to do that three times. And boom, the pancakes made for everybody. Now, I seen this person tell me, I have always done this. Do you make your eggs last or first? Comment below. Put, put um first or last. I look at this channel. She make her eggs first. She cooking the sausage and food. And I say, okay, she'll make the legs. And, and every time I watch her channel, she cooking food. I said, we got to tell these people. You make your egg last. Anybody out here who ever cooked breakfast, please do not make your eggs first. Thank you. I'm so glad you guys know this. I was screaming at the TV. I said, girl, if you don't stop making these eggs first, then you crumble them. I do not. You make your eggs first for life. I do not like crumble eggs. Then you um you cook the eggs to death. You crumble them like they got no tomorrow coming to. It's no life in the eggs, okay? I can't stand a crumble egg sitting off to the side in a bowl. I am a soft, cooked, fluffy egg girl. I be yelling at TV. But my daughter, when she came up here, she I don't want them eggs. She said, what's wrong, Ma? I said, you make crumbled eggs. Who in the hell eat crumbled eggs? She make crumbled eggs. Then she don't put the cheese in it until after it's crumbled. Then throw the cheese on top. Then your cheese and eggs. I said, I got to teach you, girl. That's not how you make eggs. I said, you don't crumble the eggs up to, to non-existence. And then you're going to throw some cheddar cheese on top and say it's going to melt. <laughs> That's how my mama used to cook it. That's how I cook it. But you and your mama cooking eggs wrong. I used to tell that. I was like, we used to get mad. I used to tell that. I was like, you can't cook for me, baby. I'm sorry. I'm like, I I'll cook for us. <laughs> I would get on my door all the time. I cook for us. But no, you got to cook the eggs last, y'all. You got to cook the eggs last. Now, what do you do? Your pancakes, your waffles, or French toast first? Well, I do my pancakes, waffles, and French toast serve first. That's because I could put them in the oven on 200 and let them warm. But see, I'm a I'm a multiple side, I'm a multiple cooker. I'm not afraid to have more than one thing going on. So actually, I cook my meat and my pancakes at the same time. Because I have my meat on one stove and I'm cooking my pancakes and waffles and stuff wherever they need to be cooked at. So that's not even true. If I'm being lazy and if I don't want to use a whole bunch of pans, then I'll be like, okay, like today, it's just me and Jackson here. I'll go in there and I'll make our pancakes first, put some butter on them, and um, put them in the oven and let them sit in the oven. And then I'll make our sausage. That's because I'm being lazy. There's only two of us. I don't feel like having multiple pans on the stove. But when I'm slave cooking for, the, for, the, for, the, for these crazy people in my house, I have more than one pan. I have a grit pan going. I have a meat pan going. And I got my pancake or French toast or my waffle maker going, whatever which one I'm doing. And then if I got making biscuits, I, do my, I always do my biscuits first. I always do my biscuits first because that's a different type of um, put together. Now your sunny side up, girl. I love that yolk. 
I love the yolk. I love me a good sunny side of egg. Bust that yolk. Mm. Don't nobody in the family like the yolk egg but Andrew. Andrew like a yolk egg. Jackson like eggs fried hard. Uh, Fufu like his eggs scrambled. Joshua like his eggs scrambled or fried hard. I like my eggs scrambled or yoked or poached. I do not like a, a, I don't like a crumble egg. And I don't like a fried hard egg. I will take a fried hard over a crumble any day. A crumble egg, I'm just not going to eat it. You, if you, you made a crumble egg, you put it on my plate, you'll know why that's the only thing left on the plate. Why do people take the who? Why people take the white? I don't know. They say it's the sperm or something. It's never hit near here or there with me, Angela. I crack that thing and mix it up and go to town. People OCDs and what they see and hear on TV makes them do crazy stuff like that. A lot of people too do do that. So if you ever cook breakfast to me and you bring me a plate of food, you're going to wonder why the, the crumbly eggs because I'm just not going to eat them. The crumbly eggs be the last thing. And I'm an egg lover. I love eggs, but them I will not eat those. My palate refuse to pick up some crumble eggs. This is the way of the culinary world. And then they better cook eggs last. Everybody cook your eggs last. Me too, Taylor. <laughs> Me too, Taylor. <laughs> Cause I don't do. Right. <laughs> Tell me, y'all know what I mean. Don't talk to my boo. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, y'all. I'm about to get up out of here because I'm about to make this van. I'm hungry, too, so I've been up for a while. I ain't had nothing to eat either. And what time is it? And y'all see how I be starving my baby? What time is it, y'all? And I'm and we I'm just about to go cook us some breakfast. Um, Easter Standard Time. KG, if you still here, or GM, what time we got? Yesterday, I ain't feed my baby till 7.30 at night. It's 5 o'clock, 4.54, 6 minutes, and we just eating breakfast. So that's when I call it. This is not breakfast. This is brunch. Because what I do, this is, so I know my cousin ain't coming because she ain't called me. And it's almost 5 o'clock. And see, and that's another reason why I didn't think I was going to cook. Because I was going to fry some chicken and make some potato salad. And see, I'm going to see can I convince Jackson because right now I really want some fried chicken and potato salad. This ain't nobody here but me and him. I go put four potatoes on, five eggs on, and um take out um five pieces of five chicken legs. Cause Jackson eat three pieces of chicken. I'll eat one. I'll eat two. Take out five drumsticks. Uh, yeah, she might be coming for dinner. <laughs> nah. She ain't called. It's five o'clock. And I ain't calling nobody. <laughs> but I'ma save my dinner for tomorrow. Um, but no. Damn, Angie wants some spaghetti and fried fish. And who came up with this, man? I'm about tired of this. I grew up just eating spaghetti. I grew up just eating spaghetti. That's it. That's all, folks. No broccoli on the side. No chicken and gravy on the side. No, no fried fish. This Bama keep pressed me out to eat some um for some spaghetti and fish. I said, Angel, y'all didn't grow up. Y'all didn't grow up eating spaghetti. Y'all grew up eating spaghetti. If I made pasta and it was for dinner, it was a dinner spaghetti. And y'all was lucky if you got some garlic bread. Why do you need a side with some spaghetti? I'm like, when did they start this mess? YouTube. YouTube started this mess. Now, every time I cook some, um, to cook some spaghetti, they want, is you frying chicken? No. 
Spaghetti is the whole meal. You better get you a bowl and plate and be happy you eating. A chicken is for another day. You taking chicken from another day. We, 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 we trying to save food. So if I'm making spaghetti today and I dig in and throw out chicken, you telling me I got to cook two dinners? No, my bama. No. No. That chicken, that pack of chicken, that's another meal. No, but I can't, he been bagging me. He, Andrew sent me stuff to my Instagram. So he sent me that. He said, Ma, and this is about a month ago. I, he said, Ma, can you please make spaghetti? And it was spaghetti, and it had the fish, the fried fish sitting on top of spaghetti. He said, can you please, can you please? I said, okay, and I posted did it last month. I never did it. Y'all make um y'all uh, met folks that eat hamburger helper as a side. No, hamburger helper is a meal baby in my house. Hamburger helper is a meal. Only day I do a hamburger helper, I make blueberry muffins because they love the blueberry muffins with the crumbles on top. I'll make a blueberry muffin and hamburger helper. Yes, and that's a whole meal. That's not a side dish. I don't know what people be coming up where they got all this extra money at making these main dishes, side dishes. I don't do that in my household. If you grew up as hamburger helper as a meal, that's a whole meal. My, I want to say my nigga so bad. I don't I got to be telling my son, say, my nigga, come on now. <laughs> That's what I be saying. I call them bammers. I be saying my nigga. When that's when I be talking about food. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's how I be telling them. You but I so I already had some tilapia. Then this man said, "No, you got. I don't want no tilapia." So I bought a bag of whiteies, and I bought everything for um um. No, I bought you made with no salads or vegetables, huh? Um, uh, burst burr. And so I said, I'm gonna make it tomorrow because he actually asked me last night, Ma, when are you making that? Um, when you make this guy said, Angel, I'm making it tomorrow, it's gonna be Sunday dinner. I said, Fried fish and spaghetti. So, y'all, that's the video y'all get next week. Y'all know I do two food videos a week, so I'm making spaghetti. I bought some turkey, um. I bought some turkey sausages and all that other stuff. I'm making this man this spaghetti and fish. And I said, and once I do it, don't ask for it again. I said, my fish is for another meal. You take them away from another meal in my home. I was serious about that too. Because food is too high to be doing that. We, 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 I, I be trying to buy food, food by days and meals. Like, this is what I'm making on Tuesday, so I need this, I need this, this, and that. This is Wednesday, this, 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 and that. Uh, I'm making a video, so I'm making nothing that had this, this, and that. No, you taking you, so you you offsetting one of my days when my fish is for a day. When I might want to make some fish and french fries. Hey, Crop Pot Queen. So, yeah, so you offsetting my days and stuff. But, uh, so that's the video. One of the videos coming next week, y'all. It's going to be a spaghetti and fish dinner. Because I'm making that for Sunday. And I most likely may record it tomorrow. So that's going to be for um, the Sunday dinner tomorrow. Is um, I got some whiteies and some um, spaghetti. Then he said, you doing garlic? I said, if I do. Hey, DC Kool-Aid. So, yep, and a whole meal and had cornbread. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm gonna do the um uh, potato salad. I'm doing spaghetti and um I know spaghetti and fish tomorrow for this child. He can stop bugging me. I'll save my potato salad for another day. Yep, that's the plan. That is the plan. I got I know it's five o'clock now. I'm going to go feed my baby because now I'm sitting here. I'm getting hungry and I've been up all night sleeping half the day. Then on here, I love you guys so, so, so much. Y'all know when I leave here, I'm going to the kitchen. And I can make these pancakes and sausage because he said, you making pancakes? He peed in the door. I said, yeah. He said, I, I ain't going to do no pizza. So he waiting on the pancakes. So I know I got to go feed him now. All right, y'all. See you guys in the next live. See everybody who wants to um 
Join me in online Zoom church tomorrow. You know, in the morning, I'll put the link up there. I'll put the link up for anybody who want to join me on Zoom for church tomorrow. Other than that, you guys have a great rest of your weekend. I really enjoyed on the couch. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. And, yeah, I see you guys Monday morning. Weekend recap.